So this part is not part of the data of an algebra of observables. It's just something that we have to be sure exists for not remembering which one it is. Uh, a norm. So that's just some function from A back to uh, simply say the non-negative reals. So this has to satisfy a bunch of Hello.
one has to be a complex number one. And um, in field A diagonal A, remaining A, is not just an arbitrary complex number, but is a non negative number. This is a very, very important definition. We're going to spend the whole talk thinking about this definition. Uh, uh, maybe uh, what you can say uh, in infinite dimension is we want to modify that definition just a little bit. But that's not. Uh, we just have to add it. Add it. Is no, no, no. I'm just going to, yeah. I, I agree that's a bit unusual, but don't mind. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Okay. You can. You can I'm definitely really going to use the word uh, observable much. So if you want to, if you want to, you can talk about it. If you decide if you want to more. That's, that's good. Okay. We'll, we'll be talking about events and states. The next time. We don't really need a name here. Yeah, A equals A diagonal A. Okay. Uh, so just an aside. <laughs> So just to be clear on that, yeah. so when if you're talking to physicists, then they would think of observables as being self going. Yeah. So they have real spectra and these are the objects that describe yep. Yep. things in the real world. Yep. But of course it's very natural and important to have a complexification of that. Yep. And the algebra that you're talking about is that kind of complexification. Yep. Well, I mean it, it's uh, uh, it's not just the complexification of the real part of the of the sort of no, 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 what I mean is that you okay. so in physics you need to find that Side here because we'll come back to this a few times. Uh, any convex linear combination? Saying, saying that a complex number is greater than equal to zero is what you don't mean to be That's it. Saying a complex number is greater than equal to zero. It's a real number. So even if that's greater than it's greater You have to you, you, you have to work a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
the expected value of an observable A on a state phi is phi applied to it. Now, I just want to insist that I want you to remember at this point that the words I'm writing with underlines here, you should not attack any particular meaning to it. You should not associate the usual meanings of these terms and define them. If I'd written here, the flippity gibbet of a kumquat on a zulu is phi of A, okay? The talk wouldn't have been different, okay? They're just words at the moment. No, no interpretation. I'm just telling you what I mean by the phrase expected well, value of an observable. It's motivated by an example. Eventually, eventually. We're, I mean, yeah, we, we, will, we, will, we will notice in a moment that these are useful words to name these notions. Okay. Uh, the probability, and again, it's just a made up word, uh, of an, uh, did, I did define event back there, didn't I? Yeah, the events of projections. Uh, the probability of an event, P, uh, in a state V is its expected value. Uh, okay, so just two things to note here. Uh, one, the unit of the algebra, you might call at this point the certain event. Okay, because regardless of the state, we take any state phi and apply it to one, by our axioms for states, we get the number one. Okay, so regardless of the state, the probability of this event is one. Okay? So we're going to call it the certain event. And zero, which again is an element of the algebra, the zero element of the vector space, is the impossible event. Uh, and then one fancy thing. So after observing an event P in the state P the new state is P hat I'm just going to write down a formula for some, some, some state satisfying those axioms so I need to tell you a linear functional so I need to tell you its values on every element A of the algebra and this is just P of P A P divided by P of P. Okay? That's that's some new complex number for every for every element A. Yeah. And again, this is all just some phrase here. I'm just defining what new state corresponding to uh, an event and an, another state is. Okay? So maybe someone can check for me that this really did define a state. Is this a state? What do we, what do we need to check? So yeah, we need to check phi hat of one. We're just plugging into the formula. That's phi of p one p divided by phi of p. One is the the unit of the algebra, so we can just drop the one out. P was an event, so in particular p squared equals p, and so this ends up as phi p divided by phi of p. And that's one. Okay, maybe we should add a little footnote about. Uh, um, about this definition only making sense when phi of p is non-zero, okay? Uh, and then I really can't write down in that corner. Um, so let's just continue right over here. The other thing we need to check is that phi hat of a dagger a is positive. So phi hat of a dagger a, let's plug it all into the formula, uh, is the old phi, phi a dagger a p, divided by phi of p, can someone tell me the, the steps in the argument now? That, uh, P silver joint. Yep, let's use the silver joint as P. We put a dagger in the first spot. In the bottom of the square. In the, uh, sorry, down here? Yeah, yeah let's, let's, let's put in a, a P and why not we put in a dagger while we're at it? Yep. Did you say what it meant for it to uh, observe and then be in the same Oh, no, 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 this whole phrase is a definition. Yeah, the, yeah. the new state after observing uh, P in the state V <laughs> is a whole phrase that we're defining. Yeah, just replacing the algebra A by the algebra P A P. Uh, 
no, it's still a state on the same algebra. The A is an element of the algebra. Remember, phi hat is meant to be a functional on the algebra. So I'm just writing a formula for a functional on the algebra. But it's a functional which is zero on one minus p. Yeah, indeed, phi hat of one minus p is, is zero. Yeah. yeah. Which has an interpretation if you read these words in English. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so what's the next step? Positivity. Oh, we, we're not quite ready to use positivity. We're really, 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 really anxious about using the axioms carefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we, we, we can turn that into AP all daggered. AP divided by P. P daggered P. Okay. And then, uh, and then that's a ratio of, uh, of non negative things. And uh, maybe that will worry a little bit about whether P of P was zero, but we know so we weren't making the definition. Okay. Okay. What's all the what are the new standard definitions? Well, we're now going to do two things. We're going to spend a while um, thinking about the case where A is a community algebra of observables. We'll walk through each of these definitions in turn and unpack what they mean, and we'll see that in that case all the underlined words on the board uh, basically acquire their usual meanings, okay? And then we will observe, oh, uh, not all algebras of observables are commutative. Maybe we should uh, still use these words, uh, but think about uh, other systems uh, and keep using those words, and then we'll have one in there. So uh, does anyone know an example? of an algebra of observables. Complex numbers. The complex numbers, great. Let's check. Uh, it's an algebra of the complex numbers, because it's just, that's saying it's an algebra of itself. The star structure is just complex conjugation. This axiom is really easy, because uh, actually it was commuted to begin with, and, and complex conjugation uh, with preserved multiplication. This axiom just becomes that axiom again. Uh, we better check they really exist at all. But that's the absolute value of a complex number, and uh, it's pretty easy to check that these axioms without that norm, the absolute value could really, really be well. Okay, and it's not infinite dimensional, so we don't need to check this, but if we did need to check this, we could have just used the complex number again. So. Okay, um, let's have a slightly more interesting one. Um, complex numbers. What's that next one? What's that? Two by two? Oh, no, that, that's, that's difficult. That's, that, that's difficult, isn't it? I mean, that's a non-commutative example, so uh, the words won't be what we, what we thought they meant. Oh, you're making me work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, the quaternions uh, are in the, the... No, no, they're not. What is wrong with the quaternions? Yeah. They not so they're not, yeah. The, the, the quaternions are certainly an algebra of the complex numbers. numbers. Oh, they're not an algebra. Oh, they're only an algebra of the reals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not... Uh, yeah, 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 it's an algebra of... Uh, okay, good. Falls at the first thing. Okay, good. Uh, next example. Uh, you say complex functions on a subspace? Uh, on a subspace. Some space. Okay, yeah, that, let's do that one. Uh, so let's do A equals uh, C to the N, which is exactly your example, because of course when we write this exponential notation, this means, uh, uh, this means functions on the set. Oh, yeah. 
Что это будет за? Just, well, 
the linear dual of c to the n is c to the n. Okay? So we can take any linear functional and we can write it as a collection of complex numbers, d1 through dn. And so then b acting on a is exactly just the sum of pi ai. Okay? That's just a, a, a characterization of the linear functional. And so now we need to think about the two conditions to make a linear functional state. Okay? So uh, if p is a state, if and only if, well, what do we need? So we need to make sure that p of anything with non negative entries is non negative. How do we guarantee that? Non-trivial linear combination. Okay, obviously 
the interesting thing is a linear convex linear combination one times itself. I don't think. Okay. So uh, what are the extremal states in this case? In fact, these observations hold completely general. Okay, if you look at phi hat p, 
you just get PPP and they all collapse and you just get one out of it. Okay, so that's, that's, that's nothing special about that. Um, okay. Let's look at just a special case of if I'm happy with that, okay? Let's look at the special case of our object rule when A and P are both events. Okay? So then P hat of A, uh, well, okay. I guess we're just going to need to say repeat this, this rule here. Um, I just want to then say that this is saying that uh, the probability. So now we're talking about an event. So the, the state on the event is the probability of the event. So I'm going to say the probability of A, even if I have given P, okay, which is just notation for saying uh, the probability in the state we have after observing P of, of A. Okay, so this is just fancy notation for that hat. Okay, uh, is uh, well in the commuted case. P A was just a projection. Did the P and A were both characteristic functions of sets. So P A is just a characteristic function of the intersection of those two sets. So I'm going to write that as the probability of A and P. Okay. If you think of events as saying that whether this, the, the system falls into some collection of possible states, then obviously the intersection of those sets is saying that both events hold at the same time. So A and P really does correspond to the intersection of the, of the sets in this community world of the product of the characters from divided by the probability of P. We've seen that equation before. Excellent. Okay, everyone, everyone is agreement. Everyone is agreement. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's uh, that's Bayes uh you know, rule or theorem. Something to just point out here was that uh, in this case we could actually see really easily that uh, uh, every observable or every A and A, so I stop getting into some of that sort of thing, every A and A is a C linear combination of events. So somehow like knowing what the new state does on the events. Actually, sort of tells you what it does. Tells you what it does. Okay. So uh, now we can see on events. Okay. So that's the entirety of possible probability that we just put out here in the axioms about states on algebra. Uh, and maybe the one final thing to say. Uh, is that uh, the infinite dimensional uh, commutative algebras of observables? I'm only saying algebras of observables uh, to avoid saying the word monomial algebra, but it's called it scary. Um, the infinite dimensional commutative monomial algebras are. Yeah. Yeah. What 
from that point of view, from the point of view of E, ah, would be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is that the is that the way things go? Um, a itself is the dual of something. Well.
taking the determinant <coughs> Dagger. 
and we'll divide that as plus one half, minus one half, minus one half, one half. That's also an effect. Okay? Two mm -hmm. different ways of decomposing an event as a as a sum of, of smaller events in fact mm -hmm. Okay. So at this point I want to go away and calculate the state space. Um, I think it's fun to do this with your bare hands and actually compute the state space for two by two matrices without knowing anything. Um, but it's not so fun that I think we should do it all together on the board. Um, so what I'll promise is that in these notes, which are I think online already at teacher.t.net slash notes, um, the last two pages are the calculation that does this using using nothing. Uh, maybe there's one exercise or something. Um, but uh, okay. So uh, the states are parameterized by uh, x, y, z in R x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one. Oh, sorry, not equals one. No, 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 no. Less than or equal to one. And let's write now explicit formulas for the state corresponding to a point x by z. Uh, so I need to tell you what that is on some two by two matrix. Oh, in this 
this formula here? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that really, that's back under this parameterization here. No. Be careful about yeah, this term. I mean, it makes sense to say 1 minus an event. It doesn't make sense at all to yeah. say 1 minus a step. Yeah, so 1 minus a step. Yeah, yeah. 1 minus a step. Yeah, they're, they're, they're typical traits on the step. Yeah, but look, it's at zero and back no, but, also points. But, but Tony's question here is a, is a very nice one. Mm -hmm. um, how do we say this geometrically? We take some uh, point in the interval and we take a two-way geometrics. Um, how do you spit out a number? Happens to be that formula. Um, if anyone knows the answer, shout it out. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, sure. So if you take your XYZ, yeah, great, and you shove it back into this formula and get a rank one projection. Okay. So, so so let's call the this the event PXYZ. Okay. Then uh, PXYZ of of M, the matrix, is the trace of P X Y Z multiplied by M. Okay, great. Okay. Um, and Okay, so the, the conclusion to draw here uh, is that states are not probability measures. On any set, okay? Yeah, because probability measures on a set have this property that these are uniquely linear combinations of the obvious Great. Okay. Um, let's do some measurement in the two matrix here now, and see that just like we and then see what the, the update law turns into. decorate this space of states with some particular points, okay? Um, so this is the x-coordinate in this parameterization, the y-coordinate, and the z-coordinate. And so up here, at the top of the sphere, I have this state, which I'm going to call up arrow written in a bracket, This is the temptation mm. to borrow the physicist's notation is irresistible. But this is the state, so it's just a linear functional, not a vector in a Hilbert space or any, anything like that. It's just a linear functional that takes a matrix A, B, C, D and spits out A. Okay? So this, remember, is the point, zero, the, the functional 0, 0, 1, which spits out A, nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay? And then down here, I have uh, the down state, uh, which when acting on A, B, C, D, spits out D. And this is going to 0, 0, minus 1. And over here, I have the state right. So, you know, should have just made a new copy of this, uh, of this picture. So here we have the state right. It's a matrix A, B, C, D. And it spits out A plus B plus C plus D over 2. Let's check that formula. 1, 0, 1, and here we have the state left. So left. Which is the matrix A, B, C, D, and it spits out minus that. Minus A plus B plus C plus D over 2. Okay? Just again, plugging in minus 1, 0. Oh, so we're going to do some measurements uh, in those states. Oh. So let's measure. F, the event we mentioned just a moment ago, from half and half and half and half. So up arrow uh, F, so this is the probability of the event F in the state up, uh, is, well, up arrow, remember, it selects out the top of the entry, that's from half. Okay, that's all right. 
Okay, what did I get wrong? This one here? Yeah. Great. Okay, so we let's put in x equals minus 1. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. So was this one totally drunk as well? No. That one's right? Oh, yeah, those ones. Are. Oh, I see. So the a's and b's still stay there. But it's minus b minus. Minus Okay, so up on f is one half. So we have a 50% chance of observing f all in quotes. Okay. If we observe f, the new state. You had A, B, C, D, which is just defined to be the original state, which we're writing as up arrow, of one half, one half, one half, one half, one half times A, B, C, D, times one half, one half, one half, one half. And if you put your parentheses around that big matrix product, divided by up arrow of I need a single typographic character for one half of this one. Okay, and multiplying all that out, um, I mean, this is the temptation to tell you guys that you don't add a multiply matrix and you can do it. You can ask them to do it. Uh, okay, or with that, divided by what we've seen before. I don't need to work out the matrix because I knew that up arrow just pulled out the stock of the entry. This guy just pulled out a factor of one half, and so this is exactly a plus b plus c plus d over two. Okay, and that, if we go look at our formulas over there, was exactly right of b and c. Okay, we did a little calculation. We started in up, we observed that we discovered the new state is now right. Okay, uh, as you can. Uh, if we easily, if instead we observed the identity minus f, that's in the 50% chance that we did not observe f, because this is not f, uh, then the new state. Observation is then is that if we, if we took the 
right how his state is bigger to f. Uh, that, that, uh, that gave us probability one, and this update rule would have just given us the right arrow state back again, which fits with the usual interpretations of things, that if you observe something that was certain, then there's no need to update your knowledge about the system up, because the state doesn't change. The update rule is different. Okay. Uh, fine. Uh, so at this point, uh, depending uh, Another way of saying that is in this two by two example, 
if you when you measure this guy, if you measure this guy, then the state is this up, regardless of what the state had been before. I mean, that that's in, I mean that may be over a little bit misleading. I mean, in bigger examples, there'll be plenty of uh, measurements that you can perform with the outcome. Even given that you observe something, the outcome still depends on the inputs. Got that? Missing. The word symbol. Um, yeah, so there are, there are a bazillion different definitions of semi-simple, um, and so that's one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so let me um, just, since you're working over the complex numbers, let me just push on to the conclusion of the next theorem. You can take the conclusion of the next theorem and the definition of semi-simplicity over the complex numbers. It's just that you said it was an exercise. Yeah, well, okay, so your, your, your exercise is look up the definition of semi <laughs> <laughs> And so, uh, by Wedderman's theorem, uh, you are in. But you can just, the conclusion is a perfectly good definition of semi-simplicity. Uh, a is isomorphic to uh, N1 by N1 matrices, direct sum, N2 by N2 matrices, plus dot 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 dot, plus NK by NK matrices over the complex number. Okay? Those are the semi simple algebras over the complex number, the direct sums of the matrix algebras. Okay? I mean, there's a, there's a general notion of semi simplicity for algebras over field and so on, and where does it say you don't do worry about the details? Like the complex number. Okay? So, whatever our algebra observables was, if it was finite dimensional, it happens to be isomorphic to something in this form. Okay? So, uh, a more abstract way of saying that uh, every uh, uh, every one I'm in algebra uh, admits faithful action. Some, and let me put some warnings here, non unique. And I'm even going to say non physical in order to pick facts with physicists. Overstates. Okay. So this observation is a, in the finite dimensional case, is a really easy consequence of, of what we just said about Wedderman's theorem and, and that our algebras had to be some of matrix algebras. <laughs> Um, because, I mean, you just take it in a matrix like this and, and, and write down a faithful action, okay? So, what is that? Well, uh, a direct sum of N, N, I, C acts faithfully on the direct sum of the C to the N, I's, just by matrix multiplication. Each block just acts on a vector of the corresponding size, okay? Said, uh, Said another, a slightly more complicated way, uh, you can take your direct sum of your matrix algebras and you can embed it, in fact, as a star algebra into uh, matrices on the sum of the NI. See, okay? That's just taking your matrices and sticking them in. Blocked out. Okay, and that and so then our, our algebra is just acting on this big open space C to the sum of the NIs. Okay, so uh, notice. Okay, so so I said this was this was non-unique. Can you tell me why it's non-unique? <coughs>
Oh, no, no, no. I mean, the, I mean, this has big order morphism. This just changes, changes the basins or something. I don't know. There's lots of isomorphism. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so, uh, oh, I, I won't complain too much about the order of space. Uh, but, okay. We'll, 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 we'll have plenty of time to complain. So. Um, okay. So we've got some Hilbert space. Uh, so, maybe, so maybe generally, the, the general story here is that we can take our algebra and stick it inside the of H. Okay? Just like the of H. Okay. So going back to our two by two examples, so given a unit vector uh, xi in H, the final name <laughs> vectors, uh, we can define what's known as a vector state. Okay. And we'll define that, so phi sub xi, and the definition of phi sub xi on some algebra element A is just you act using this action on the, the vector via A, and then you compute its inner product uh, with that unit vector. Okay? Let's check it's really a state. What do we need to do? The accent is still up there. Excellent. Yeah, so, we st so it's first of all, it's, it's linear with respect to A, because I'm a mathematician and I'm using my, writing my inner product in the round brackets, which means they're linear in the first argument and anti-linear in the second, unlike the physicist who use pointy brackets, and uh, anti-linear in the first and linear in the second. Okay. Um, okay, okay, it is a linear functional with respect to A. If you stick in A equals the identity, the identity acts on xi by just giving you xi back and you the inner product of xi with itself, which is what it means to be a unit vector. So we've got one. And then we need to check that xi of b dagger b, well, that's the inner product of b dagger b xi with xi. And now remember, this was a this was a star algebra homomorphism. So the way that b dagger is acting on the Hilbert space is by the adjoint of the way that b is acting, if you know this stuff, or just the conjugate transverse matrix. Uh, and so we can move the b dagger over the other side, and we get b xi xi. B, sorry, b xi in the product b xi is one number. Okay? So we get, those give us vector states. Uh, so the vector had no physical meaning. Just to be the dead horse. Um, by the example of e to the i theta times xi, is exactly the same state as by xi. You get the data disappear because of the system linearity. Um, and it's the state that is the thing that really describes the system, not the vector state that we're using as a representation of it. Uh, and yeah, if you, uh, I mean, say that you, you accidentally embedded your algebra A up inside B of H1 plus H2, Okay, just by sticking it inside here. I guess that's a bit evil, isn't it? That's not the image. Let's go. Okay, what do I want to say? I need to tell you what the vector states for two by two matrices are. And I need to tell you what the update rule looks like when we're only thinking about vector states. Okay? And then we'll have recovered what everyone usually does and then it doesn't happen. <coughs> Let's just check what the vector states are. Okay. So I just take ABCD acting on XY, the product of XY. Okay. What does that look like? That's A uh, XX bar plus b x bar y plus c x y bar plus b y y bar. Okay? I'm applying matrices of using test linearity. <coughs> and I think we've erased it by now. We've erased it. But we had this complete parameterization of, um, of the states according to points in the, in the, uh, in the unit ball. So this is uh, our phi x, y, z. And the formula, oh, I used x and y. That's really bad. Um, <laughs> I don't know. This is phi x, y, z with x equals. 
equals u dot v plus u v bar, y equals minus i u v bar minus u dot v, z is 2 u bar minus 1. And a little calculation, just looking at those numbers for u and v, tells you that, uh, that x squared plus y squared plus z squared, this is actually a bit of a gross calculation because now <coughs> this is, this is cortic in the use of these, okay? But it turns out to be a very simple cortic in the use of these, just one, okay? So the vector states are the experimental states. On the bottom of the end. Okay, and then let's just do the update rule. Exactly the state. 
xi divided by e xi uh, acting on the on Okay? So the conclusion of that is that phi hat xi was phi e xi divided by the And so this is telling you that if you start with a vector state and you observe some event, the new state is exactly the projection of that vector into the eigenspace space corresponding to the density of that vector. Okay? And that that's recovering the, as a consequence of all the stuff that came earlier, the usual formulation of the updated component maps. So the way the wave functions collapse uh, after uh, after you measure them. But I think it's I think that the, the nice thing about this perspective is that it tells you that the same wave function collapse that is happening that tells you that had in terms of P is exactly the phase rule for updating a state after the, after the, after the learning more about the system. Just in the second one of the as well. So how about we stop there? Historically, I mean, historically, this was just never. This, this wasn't the historical route of the quantum mechanics. 
the historical route was via Hilbert spaces, and then, and then von Neumann and Co. developed all this theory later in order to do the infinite dimensional versions of quantum mechanics, which are scary and tricky and difficult, and they had to do things this way. But then, just to sort of, sort of astonish us a bit, no one went and rewrote the introductory books uh, in this way. Okay. Uh, and by the way, the next the next Friday, of course, is Good Friday, and the Friday after that is the um, Anzac Day 